Hey folks, Jeff the World here. Um, this is my first tutorial on using Fast Tracker 2, my favorite music program ever. Um, I'm gonna have a series of tutorials here, um, mainly aimed at like complete beginners, like assuming you know nothing about using a tracker at all. Um, I'm gonna jump you guys right in. Help menu, kind of weird place for a tutorial to go, but uh, there's a couple of really important reference menus here. Um, the effects menu here will show you all the various effects and the uh, the short code for them, which is really important. As a beginner, you're going to be looking at this constantly. I, I even recommend like printing off uh, the documentation on this, which comes with uh, Fast Tracker when you download it, and keeping that beside you. Same with the keyboard shortcuts, which are here. Um, it shows you um, all the various keyboard shortcuts. I'll be mentioning a, a bunch of these in both effects and keyboards. I won't be showing you all of them, and uh, it's just good to have a nice little reference here. Uh, most of the stuff here you don't really need to look at. Um, config, um, I.O. devices, if you're not getting any sound, make sure your output device is set correctly, um, depending on whether you have a sound blaster or a graphics ultrasound sound card. If you're doing it in emulation, uh, sound blaster is probably your best bet in, like, DOSBox or something. Um, if you're using it in, on real hardware and you're still not getting any sound, make sure your, uh, Make sure your IRQ, uh, your port, your DMA are set correctly in your uh, BIO settings. Um, if it sounds really quiet, make sure your amplification is high enough and your volume. Um, aside from that, um, not much you should be touching in there. Layout. You can do some stuff like uh, pattern stretch, make it a bit more readable. Um, you can change your colors, which is nice. And uh, Space Pigs is the one that I use, which gets a lot of weird looks when I've got like a... like mid-90s laptop uh, on the bus and I've got like this running on it. Uh, people give me some weird looks but uh, whatever. For the tutorial just to be easy on your eyes I'll use Arctic. You can also change your mouse shape to some awful and ugly things but uh, you know why Why would you do that? Miscellaneous menu, there's some miscellaneous stuff. Make sure your keyboard is set out to uh, to be US if you're in the US or whatever type of keyboard you have but uh, the default is Swedish so uh, I recommend setting it to the right one. Uh, mouse sensitivity, you can set default directories for, for things like your modules, your instruments, your samples, and all that stuff uh, so that it has a default directory to go to. It makes things easier, but uh, you'll, you'll learn what all these are in just a sec. So I'm going to save that and exit. And we're going to jump right into actually making some sounds. So disk operations, that's your command and control. This is where you do all your loading and saving of samples and uh, of songs. You can see here along the side you can choose to load a module. Modules are what we call songs because of the format that they're stored in. Instruments, I'll explain what those are in a bit, but for now, samples. Bam, that's what we're gonna load. So you can load samples in some formats that you're not gonna have and wave, which is what you'll probably have. Make sure that you save them as 44.1 16-bit uh, waves. It won't accept anything higher than that. You can you can use lower quality. You, like, you can use 8-bit samples if you have them. I don't know why you would have like 8-bit wave samples, but if you do, you can use them. But don't use anything higher than that, it won't accept them. But 16-bit wave is still pretty good. Modern trackers, you'll probably be able to use 32-bit floating point stuff, but for, for what we're doing, it's not going to make a difference. Um, so yeah, we're just going to load in this sample here. And you'll see piano.wave has now loaded in. And I'm going to right-click here and name that piano. And then click Enter, and you'll see we've got our first sample. I'm gonna just quickly explain what this box here is. This is your sample menu. This, this is pretty much always here. You'll see at the side you can change between various banks and if you click the swap bank box it'll swap these banks. A large number of samples. This is all in hexadecimal you'll notice so it's not actually 80 it's a much larger number. So I'm gonna click sample editor and you'll see that actual sample there. And If I click one of the keys on my keyboard <laughs> And that's in a really low octave, so that's kind of weird, but uh, you'll see it plays that sample. The F keys at the top of your keyboard um, will switch your octave. So if I click F5, you'll see it's now in a much higher octave. F6, it's one octave up. So you can see those various F keys will change your octave. Um, and your, your keyboard works um, kind of like an organ. So imagine your Z, your row starting at Z, uh, that is your white keys in your on the bottom half of your organ so so you can play it like a piano then uh, the row starting at A uh, that's like the black keys for that so and 
and then the row starting at Q, um, it's one octave up. And the row starting at one is like your black keys, one up. Whatever. Um, typing one-handed here. Um, so you'll notice, for example, Z and Q, that's one octave apart. If you use uh, G and 5, one octave apart. So just kind of imagine it that way as, a, as an organ, kind of, I guess. Um, so you'll see the sample here. There's some various things you can do. You can crop it if the sample's too long. You can uh, do various things to the sample. You can have it ping pong or loop parts of the sample. Uh, ping pong is like a loop, but instead of jumping back to the start, it bounces back and forth. Um, so sometimes at the end of a sample, you'll add like a ping pong. So you could just add ping pong. Uh, and let's say I move these over here. And if I play a note here, you'll see. So now it's ping ponging the end of that sound um, until I let go. So you can you can see how that works. And, and forward, you'll see uh, a forward loop does the same thing. But uh, you'll notice the forward loop doesn't work so well in that situation because uh, the jump to the beginning sounds kind of uh, awkward. It adds that little click almost. The rest of this stuff you probably won't have to mess with too much um, for now, um, but you'll learn how to use it eventually, I'm sure. The next thing you want to edit is the instrument editor. So um, the sample that we've loaded in is now part of an instrument as well, and uh, we can change the parameters on an instrument. Um, the envelope here, I'll be explaining a bit more in later episodes, but it basically lets you uh, choose the, the way that the volume changes over time. Um, and you can see it's basically a graph. You can add or remove points. Uh, you can have loop, again, similar to the way it's lo looping on the uh, on the sample. You can set a loop like that here as well and edit the points. And, you, and you'll see that the volume will follow uh, that envelope. And there's a panning envelope as well, which is the same thing, but for uh, where the sound sits in the stereo field. So panning left and right um, in, your, in, in the left and right speaker. Um, over here are some other important stuff. Volume, um, maximum volume is 40, hexadecimal 40, but 40. Um, minimum is zero, zero is no sound. 40 is full volume, obviously. Um, and you can set the, the default panning as well. So you can, if you're not using a panning envelope, you can set the panning here. And you can pan it partly left or right or fully left and right um, that way. So that's that. Now you have one sample. So let's start tracking some stuff in. Spacebar will arm it. And once you're armed, um, like I said, you can't see that it's armed in uh, in the emulator, but I can assure you it is. So I'm gonna just type some things in here. I'm gonna I'm gonna go C B M C B M C B M. That should be enough. So if I click Shift, you'll hear what I just typed in playing. So let's say that's too fast. So I'm gonna use the arrow keys here. Yeah, the arrow keys to navigate, by the way, up and down. Um, so while I'm still armed, I'm going to press the delete key. So I'm going to show you one of the really nice features of uh, tracking um, within Fast Tracker, and it's the add feature. So you'll notice every time I type a note in, uh, that it jumped me down by one. What that is, is that's, that's how many I'm adding after entering a note. So if I click two, two, um, then you'll see that it jumps me down by two after entering a note. So now if I enter the same thing, so now you'll see that I've entered the exact same thing on the keyboard, but because of my add, it's spaced it out more. So that it's, I guess, at a more sensible speed here. Um, that becomes really useful when you're uh, doing things like, let's say, volume editing. Let's say I want every other note to be, um, to be at half volume. So what I can do is I can change this to 4, and then start editing the volume. I can just keep entering 20. I can even just hold down 20 and it's now added tw a 20 next to each of these. So this is the volume column, which I just edited. Um, if it's blank, it'll leave it at the default volume. So the default volume that we have in here, it's max volume. Um, so if I play it now, you'll hear that every other note is, is much quieter. Um, and the spacebar will stop that song again. So every other note you'll see was at half volume. So that's an, an easy way of, of, of doing things that require spacing. You can use it for drums, for example, if you want to use... Uh, let's actually load in a drum sample. So I'm going to click here to my next, uh, my next instrument, and then go to Disc Operations, Bass Drum. So I've now loaded in the bass drum. I call it Bass Drum. 
enter. So since I'm on four, I can just very easily, wait, let's find the note here. So yeah, that's my little kick note there. So I'm just going to arm for recording. And I just hold down the note, basically, and it just keeps entering it over and over again. It's like holding down a, you know, the U key when you type foo. You know, it's like that. So I've just now very easily added uh, a kick to the the beat, each beat of the bar. So you'll hear now. Our very, very bizarre song that we've just started here. So you'll see there that it's uh, it's a really nice feature to allow you to to add things very quickly. Um, I'm going to show you the last column here really quickly. Uh, you'll see here now we have one note. If I press play, you'll hear that it's just like a continuous monotonous tone. But we're going to do an effect here. So remember those effects I showed you earlier in the help menu? That's what this is. So to enter an effect, all you have to do is enter the first nibble. Now that's what these are called, nibbles. Um, the first nibble is your effect nibble. So it's what you use to select the actual effect. So in this case, we're going to use effect zero because it's already there and it's the first one um, and it's neat. It's the arpeggio. So the first one is zero and the second two nibbles in arpeggio um, are the uh, the two other uh, semitone values that you're going to jump to. So for example, if I enter four and seven, then it'll go between the root four semitones up and seven semitones up. Um, you have to enter it for every one you want it for. Um, so let's say just one, and I'm going to hold down four. See, because what I did is I set it to add one, so it just adds one each time. And you'll hear it do this nice little sustained note here. So, yeah, there you hear a major chord. Pretty much all I'm going to show you. I'm going to actually show you one more thing in this video. Um, when you're armed for editing, you can add this fancy little thing Oh, I didn't want to add that many. Sorry about that. There we go. So this little thing here, uh, it's your caps lock button. We'll add it. Um, and it's a kind of note thing that you can place. And what it does is it's, it's your cutoff. So notes, for example, like this one that go on forever. Will, uh, they won't end on their own. But uh, that there will, will trigger the end of the sample. Um, so you'll see that it uh, it cuts it off. If I didn't have that there, so if I delete that there, you'll see that that note will go on just forever, and it just keeps going. And that's uh, that's pretty much all there is for this lesson. Uh, tune in next time. I'm going to show you some more complicated stuff, but uh, hopefully you guys get started with making some some basic tracks there. Um, You'll only be able to make like one bar of music with what I've taught you, um, but at least it gets you started with learning how to load samples in, putting down some melodies and stuff. Um, actually, you know what? I'll just show you how to save a song. <laughs> That's a good idea. Um, if you just go to Disk Options Module, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you just type in a file name and then click Save. Um, one like quick mention here, uh, a single click on any of these will load them. So. If you're working on something, make sure not to single click any of these things because then it'll overwrite it if you haven't saved your stuff. So, like if I just clicked folk, like it just loads that song right away. Um, and all that data that I just had was lost. Like, so I just, yeah, I just recommend make sure you're very careful when saving, uh, saving and loading and stuff. Make sure you don't overwrite stuff without properly saving stuff. Um, but that's pretty much it for this lesson. Thanks, guys. Peace.